spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Well, it's a joy to be with you today as we uh, gather together on this program of The Pastor Speaks. Appreciate the invitation by the station here in Quincy, Illinois, that has invited us to come. It's a tremendous privilege to be able to preach God's Word wherever we are able to preach it. And this morning or this afternoon, whichever you're here in this prog program today, I I just want to lay out my heart a little bit of something what God has been speaking to me over the last few years, that God is about his business. God has been about his business, and there's been a lot of questions that have been brought to me over the last few months with all of the circumstances of things that are going on and just exactly what are we, uh, what are we going to see? What's going to take place? Uh, what's taken place for sure is is that God's still about his business. I can be assured that God is not finished. He's still working. He still is purpose-driven, and he still has things that he's planning on doing. And he'll be doing it until it is finished. And it's apparently not finished because the kingdom is still here. I want to encourage you today as I, as I speak for just a few moments with you, I appreciate, as I said already, the opportunity to be here. But I, I want to just share the, it, what the Lord has laid on my heart uh, several months ago, actually, uh, back in, in about March or before March, it was actually into February, where the Lord began to speak to me about the times that we are living in and that there is a, there's a going to be a change in the landscape and, and that things are not going to be quite the same. I don't begin to understand all that, what all the Lord is saying in that. But one thing I do know is that the landscape has changed in our lives. We've seen so many changes that's going on. But many are asking, well, is God involved in this? God's involved in his purpose. And remember that no matter what's going on around you, no matter what's happening within your life or within your family or within your church or within the ministry that you're involved in, God is still about his business. God has not been taken or blindsided by the events of the last several months. He is still going forth. In fact, one of my key verses that, that uh, was on the verse, uh, scripture, uh, screen just a moment ago in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his, oh, I look at that last word, to according to his purpose. Amen. His purpose will override the events of this day, and eventually we are going to see how he's working that out. I want to challenge you today that God has a list of things that he has been prepared since before the foundation of the world. This isn't just, well, well, let's try this or let's try that. God's been about his purpose and he's still about it. What he's planning to do, he's still continuing. I want you to recognize with me today that God is the author and finisher. What he wrote to do, he is continuing to do. What he planned to do, he is still in step. In spite of how it may look a little difficult for us, we need to recognize that God's still in charge. This is not about some circumstance that has changed God's order. One day we'll be able to see that. I could spend some time this morning or this afternoon on, on, on the story of Joseph and how things just look to be completely out of order. His life looked to be complete chaos. He'd been uh, affected by his brethren. He had been affected by his employer. Uh, and, and then yet still things weren't working out. But finally, we realized that God used Joseph not because of, of his plan, but God's own plan. He told his brethren after their, their father had died, 
He said, what you have meant for evil in my life, for meant for evil, has God has meant it for good, and he's used it for good. God isn't causing these difficulties, but God can turn it around for his purpose. There's nothing that's going on that's changing what God's purpose is. I want to talk to us a little bit today on God's to-do list. In God's to-do list, one of the first times that we see it in the life of Christ was when he was 12 years of age. And they were down in Jerusalem and they had was heading uh, to the temple and they were headed back home. And all of a sudden they realized that the, the boy wasn't with them. And they turned around and said, where, where's, where's that boy at? And they turned around and went back to, to, to the temple and they found him there as he was discussing things with, with uh, educated people of his day, of that day. Uh, and they were uh, taken back by way that God's, God was using him and the wisdom that was going through him. And the thing that really strikes me is what he says in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. They asked him and said, why are you doing this? Why have you done this? And he responded and he says, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now, I want you to think about that in the listing. I don't know how you are, but uh, I didn't used to have to have a list as much as I do these days. But now I make up a list of things that I need to do because I sometimes leave a few things out. Now, not that I get everything done. It's on my to-do list. But I, I look at the Lord and I recognize that this first thing that he had to do was going to be uh, seeing these uh, leaders in, in Jerusalem and responding to his folks or to Mary and, and her husband Joseph that he must be about the father's business. One of the first ones I want to talk about is found in the book of John chapter 4. I love this story because it fits so much about the circumstances of an everyday life that is messed up and Things are just not going very well. But then you recognize that there is, there is a, a, a something about the list that God had sent Christ to go to, through Samaria, it says in John 4.4. 4, it says he had to go through Samaria on their way back. Now, that's unusual. You know the story if you've been a Bible student at all is that Samaria, the people, the Jews would go out of their way to not have to go through Samaria, but Jesus needed to go through there. There was somebody on his to-do list in, Sam in Samaria that he had to meet. Well, we know who she was. She was a woman that has a history of husbands, and she's out at the well, and Jesus uh, was showed up at the well. The, the boys, his boys, his disciples, and whoever else was involved on the journey this time, they had gone into, uh, into town to get some food. They had went shopping. And so while they were gone, he was resting there at the well. And this woman from Sychar came up there and it says, and many of the Samaritans uh, uh, would, would, would go to this well. It was a well, it was called Jacob's well. And there he was sitting and she drew water, and uh, he asked her to drink. And she said, why would you ask me for water? Uh, the Jews don't have anything to do with us. And, and he said, if you knew who was asking you for drink, uh, you would ask him for drink. Uh, that's so powerful. Understand something. Jesus needed to go through this town. Why? Because there was someone there that he was going to touch that was going to make a difference in that part of the world. If you understand with me this morning or this afternoon again, whatever time you're seeing this program, is that there is, there is still a list of God's needs of seeing people that are, need to reach out and touch him or they need to, him to touch them or for whatever the condition may be. But this lady was going to be such a blessing to the town of Sychar. It says that she went back into town after 
um, Jesus had ministered to her. And he says, and, and you need to come and see this man that I have met. He's told me all about my life. Amen. I hope you understand with me this afternoon that there is something powerful in the fact that God is going out of his way to touch somebody. And I don't know who you are or where you may be watching this program today, but there is no doubt that if you are in need of something from God, you're on his to-do list. And I want you to understand that. Praise God for that truth. Many of the Samaritans, it says, of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who had testified. Amen. Can you see the connection? Can you see how that works? Understanding that uh, even in my life, I've been in the ministry since 1966. Now, you can do the math. I've been pastoring churches and ministering overseas and different places, all kinds of things. God has moved in my own personal life and ways. Why? Because there were people that were on his to-do list that we as believers can reach out and touch them in ways that's, that is going to change their condition. I believe that, that the, the town of Sychar was so affected by the testimony of, of this woman because of Jesus going out of his way to touch his heart, touch her heart. Listen, I know there's a lot of pressure on people today. I know there's a lot of things that are, are weighing heavy. People are all operating in fear. But I'm going to tell you, the Lord is coming near your house today. Through this message, through this word, through the scriptures, he has you on his list yet. God is going to touch you everywhere you hurt. Whatever is going on in your life, he is going to send someone to you. I believe that with my whole heart. God has got people that are ministering around your area, wherever you are today, knowing that you have a need of him. He says that, so in John 4, 39, it says, many of the Samaritans that believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay. But I want you to notice verse 41. It says, and many more believe because of his own word. Now, one thing is for sure, the to-do list has different people involved in that, but God has, has other things that he's doing. His to-do list includes you today. Can I hear that in your own heart? Can you hear that? God loves you. He cares about you. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're experiencing, God cares about you. And he knows your name, he knows your address, and he knows your need. Let me tell you, reach out to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand it. Let me give you another one. Found in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 15. His own disciples was also on his to-do list. Listen to what it says. And he said unto them, with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. What an amazing picture that is, that Jesus was so passionate for the work that God the Father had sent him. See, when it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that covers more than just a little babe in a manger. That covers the purpose and plan of God that from the foundation of the world, Amen. He knew you were going to have the need you have. And he sent his son to cover that. Can you imagine with me that those disciples were sitting there and they were hearing Jesus uh, prepare to go to die. They, they, they couldn't grasp that. You and I can read the story after the fact, but they could not do that. They were just having to hear it and understand that, that they, he was going to the cross, but he was going for them. But before he went, he spent considerable time with them. That last Passover, he said, I, he said, I have desired to have this meal with you. Now, I, I, we could expound on that this morning or today, but I'm not going to go there right now. I want, I want us to talk to you about the fact that what God has begun in you, he will bring to completion. What he started, he will finish. What his plan is for you is way beyond anything that we can even imagine. And I want you to recognize today 
that, as I have already said, if God works out his own purpose. Amen. In, in the book of Acts chapter 2, there's a real brief little verse there as the, in the message of Peter uh, talking about the purpose of the Lord. I, I, it just amazes me how much that the Lord had before he even came, even from the creation story, he knew he could see. See, time is not an issue for God. Amen. Way back before, before the fall of man, God could see you today on this the first part of September in 2020. He knows just exactly what's going on. Isn't it amazing to you that God cares enough for you that even your heads and your hair are numbered, hair on your head is numbered and recognizing that he knows all about our situation. Let me go to another one real quick. Like This is found in the book of Luke, chapter 19. Verse number five, the story is about Zacchaeus. Now, isn't he an interesting fellow? He was, he was hated by his neighbors because he was a tax collector. He was, uh, he was robbing from the Jews to give to the Romans. He was, he, he was not well thought of, and yet he had heard about this Jesus. He had heard about that. And so he, he, he I, I want to see him. I, I want to go where he's at. I want to see something about this man. I've heard these stories about him healing the sick and doing different things. I, I want to go see this man. But when Zacchaeus got down there, he, he, he was, there was a, such a crowd of people that he, he couldn't see Jesus because he was short of stature. Uh, in the King James language, it says that he, he couldn't see for the press. Uh, I sure like to play off of that a little bit, but uh, the press is blinding a lot of people. But regardless, I just forget I even said that. <laughs> but looking at what I look at him, what he's doing, he climbed up into the sycamore tree, and there he was looking for Jesus. And when he looked out over there, the crowd, the crowd was so heavy uh, that he couldn't see him without getting up in that tree. But when he got over to that tree, Jesus had Zacchaeus on his to-do list. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. He came under that tree, and Zacchaeus up in that tree. It says that he stopped and he looked up in the tree. And he called him by name. Hallelujah. Oh, can I take just a moment to challenge you? The Lord knows your name. He knows your circumstance. He knows what you're facing. He knows all about those things. But he knows your name so well that he even breathes it to the Father. The Bible says that he prays for us. He intercedes for us. Can you imagine that he would call your name and said, Pop, or Father, or Abba, whatever terminology would be used there. He said, Father, so-and-so, whatever your name may be, put it in there. They need you today, Father. They need a touch from you in this manner, whatever may be going on. Hallelujah. But in this verse, in verse 5, it says, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name, Zacchaeus. Hallelujah. Come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Wow. I must be a guest in your home today. Your home, Zacchaeus. Not the other people that are around that, are, that were keeping you from seeing me, but your house. I must go to your house. Amen. Can I tell you this afternoon or today that God is calling you out understanding Come down. You need to come into your life. He wants to come in where you are and touch you where you are, touch you in your need. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. I must be a guest in your home today. Amen. <laughs> I like the next verse in verse 7, you know, two verses down. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he's gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Yeah. That would be my Lord. 
That would be on his list. Amen. Yeah, it's not the high and mighty. It's not, to, it's not the, because of wealth or, or anything else that, that God would come and to bless anyone. It's not about what we are. It's about who he is. It isn't a matter of that, that, we, that we love him. It's that he has loved us. Amen. Even Adam and Eve, when they had fallen in the garden, they had sinned. They had turned against God in that way. The Bible says that they heard him coming, walking in the cool of the day. Why? Because they were on his to-do list. Yes, they were. And he came into that garden. And what's he do? He called them by name. Amen. He said, Zacchaeus. Earlier, he had said to the disciples, I personally wanted to have this meal with you. I desired to have this meal with you. Amen. I could go on with this particular point, but I want you to understand today that no matter where you are in the condition of circumstances of today, that you're still, he can call your name. He can call you. Amen. Your name may be Harry. It may be Mary. It may be Larry. It might be Janet. It might be whatever. But the Lord knows who you are and what you need. Amen. God cares for you. He loves you abund abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Why? Because the to-do list has your name on it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to go back to the book of Romans chapter 8. In verse 27, it says, He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints. Amen. The saints, that you me. If you're a child of God today, you're on that list. Amen. He's making intercession for you and me. Understand with me. There's a point where God's blessing us just because he knows us. Hallelujah. I've known a lot of important people in my life. I've, I've been privileged to meet people of high renown, but it didn't mean as much as this does. Understanding that the greatest thing that the greatest person I've ever met is the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing that he has come into my life to touch me everywhere that I hurt. He has began a life in me that he is going to complete. Am I a perfect person today? Absolutely not. But I am a serving a perfect God. And all that he has promised, I have been recipient of. God has blessed me above anything that I could ever share with you today. But understanding with me in that verse, it says, because he maketh intercession for the saints. Now, here's the kicker. According to the will of God. Now, what is God's will for you? that you might prosper and good, be in good health. Yes, that, that is part of it. But in spite of just that, when the disciples were going through difficulties, they knew that God had not left them. Even though they may be going through a hard time, God was still there. Jesus said it this way. He said, I'm going away. But if I go away, I won't leave you as orphans. No, no, no. I won't leave you as orphans. You won't be as an orphan. No, no. He, 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 Jesus told his boys, let me read it to you in the book of Acts, uh, uh, or John, pardon me, 14, verse 16 and, and 18. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Hallelujah. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And even in the Great Commission, he said, and I will be with you until the end of the age. He's promised that no matter what this world seems to offer us, there's still there's much more. Amen. Let me hurry on quickly. In, in a will, uh, and I believe that part of what Jesus is saying in John chapter 16 is that he has given them their, his last will and testament. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
It is to your advantage, that's you and me, not just the disciples, that's all of us. It's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I go away, uh, then I can send the helper, or the helper won't come until he does. Now, <laughs> uh, let me maybe a little bit lighthearted, but uh, understanding, uh, I've only been in one will that I know of, uh, and that was a, a little lady in a nursing home in my hometown years ago. And I didn't know what she said. You're in my will. But she never told me what it was about. Well, finally, when she passed away, I found out what it was. I was in her will to sing at her funeral. <laughs> and that was the end of that. But uh, for us to receive anything for that we may be in somebody's will about, to have to die. Jesus had to die so that the Holy Spirit could come and be within us wherever we are. Now, I want to leave something real quickly, and the time is fleeting away, but when Jesus was on this earth, he was limited to the physical condition. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes, he is everywhere. I, as I've already said earlier in the program, I have ministered around the world, and I've met and recognized the presence of the Holy Spirit in places like Hong Kong and places like Mexico, places like Africa, three, uh, three or four different countries in Africa that I've been in, and, and God was in every one of those. I've been in some villages in the outback of, uh, of, the, uh, of Africa and walk into the church services there with the anointing of the Holy Spirit that was not a mystery to me because Jesus said, if I go away, I'll send another comforter to come alongside. The original language uses the word paraclete, and, and th that paraclete means alongside. Jesus is still about his business of taking care of his to-do list, but now it's operating through the work of the Holy Spirit. You know who he is. He's been around you, he said, but when I leave, he will come He'll no longer just be around you. He'll be in you. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was an influence. But in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is an endowment of the presence of God with us forever. As we come to the end of this broadcast, I pray that you will recognize that God has your name. He calls you down from the Zacchaeus tree and says, I have desired to be able to partake with you. Come, let us partake together. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. And sweet is the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down. Down.